Hey guys, Sean here at the Gardener Center. So this week I'm continuing with my um, gardening friends and foes show and tell. Um, I've expanded it a little bit. You know, I had been asking you guys to send pictures into me, which you've been doing, which is fantastic. Um, but this week I expanded a little bit. And I was like, well, why not? You know, people bring us plant samples and bags of bugs all day, every day at this time of year. So I was like, well, why not? start preserving some of the samples that you guys are bringing in so that we can talk about especially things that people are bringing in more than once a day um so this week i'm going to be talking about a, a couple of different plant problems and then i'm also going to be talking about an insect that looks bad but isn't so um if you are gardening with hydrangeas you definitely who isn't if you're gardening with hydrangeas you definitely want to stay tuned this week so i'll be right back all right, guys, so my first item this week, um, you know, earlier during the week, I went inside the store and Tracy was walking down towards the back and she had something in her hand and I said, hey, what do you got there? And she said, oh, look, it's hydrangea scale. And I said, okay, that's cool. And she kept, she kept walking and I said, hey, wait a minute, bring that back. I said, let, let me have that thing. I said, because she said, she mentioned that six or seven people this week had come in with this. So I said, yeah, let me have that because that's going, that's going to be the star of the video this week. We're definitely talking about that. Um, so what I have here is an insect pest that's very common on hydrangeas in some years more so than others. Um, this is hydrangea scale. And I'm actually really excited to be talking about hydrangea scale because we've never talked about scale before and they're kind of, they're kind of, they work a little differently than most insects. So it's going to be a good opportunity to talk about that. Um, but this is very prevalent on hydrangeas hence the name hydrangea scale um you'll also see this a lot on japanese maples um that's another one that gets this and i mean i guess in that case we can call it japanese maple scale but um it's typically known as hydrangea scale um and you, this is what it looks like here um a lot of people think it's a growth or a fungus but it's actually an insect and that's one of the things that makes scale very different from other insects is they don't they spend most of their lives not moving so they're um they're almost like a barnacle, you know, they, 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 when they're, when they first hatch, they're, um, when they're nymphs or crawlers, they move about like a conventional insect would, but once they mature, they kind of anchor on like a barnacle and they spend the rest of their life in one place on the plant. Um, there's hard bodied and soft bodied scale. This happens to be a soft bodied scale. Um, the white structures that we're seeing actually aren't the insects themselves these are the tubes they lay their eggs in so the mother's in that tube filling it up with eggs but i know kind of gross but these guys are on um, scale are typically kind of tough to get rid of because of that lack of mobility um when an insect's crawling about it's easy to hit with a pesticide um these guys because they're stationary and especially the hard shelled ones but even the ones with the soft with the soft shell it's very hard for um insecticides to get in there um the one we like the most for them is over here this is a horticultural oil spray um this is it's an organic product and this guy is not a poison what it is is a suffocant so we've talked about the um we've talked about the organicide b safe before the sesame oil so this works in much the same way where it coats the scale and it actually cuts off its air supply so that it can't breathe anymore um, but this is um this is popping up all over the place right now on hydrangeas and and guys if you have a little bit of it um, just pick the leaves off and throw them away. You don't have to. You don't have to spray the plant if it's just a small case of it. Especially if it's a mature hydrangea, they can usually they can usually shake that off no problem. If the infestation gets severe, they'll start sucking the life out of the plant, and you might see the leaves start to turn yellow. You might see leaves starting to drop off, and that's when you may want to take action with with a spray like the horticultural oil spray over here. So hydrangea scale keep your eyes open for that another one we got a lot of this week and honestly guys if you've been gardening for more than five minutes you've probably seen this before um this is powdery mildew and powdery mildew is a, a fungal disease you know as far as diseases go i consider it, it's more it's kind of like the dandruff of the plant world i mean it looks terrible and it's kind of gross but 
it's not going to kill your plants. It's really kind of an aesthetic thing. There are some plants, um, Monarda, this is bee balm. I also have some phlox here that a customer brought in. This is actually a good, a good example of it just getting started here. And this is an example of it in, in all its glory. Um, it rarely, if ever, will kill a plant, and some plants have it every single year. So things that come to mind right away is the bee balm, is the phlox. If you've grown cucumbers or zucchini or yellow squash or watermelons, I mean, you can barely go through a week without them getting mildew. Um, also, another one is the, like the old-fashioned purple lilacs, and then a lot of times even like peonies, by the time we get to August, September, they can sometimes be covered in mildew. Um, and honestly, I'm standing here right now trying to think of a plant that I've never seen mildew on, and I, I can't come up with one right now. Um, it's a plant, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem that can affect just about any plant, but it's very prevalent on, on some, certain ones like we just talked about. And so if you garden with plants that get, that get mildew every year, um, like most diseases, even with us, um, prevention is much easier than the cure in most cases. So um, this is easy to spray for, but preventing it from happening is, is, the, best, is the best course of action. Um, it's brought on by the weather. I mean, obviously it's a fungal infection, but it's brought on by weather. And, you know, a lot of people think that it's brought on by rainy weather, and it's actually not. Um, warm, humid weather is what is, are the favorable conditions for mildew. Um, not necessarily rainy, and believe it or not, not even humid, hot weather. Once it goes above like 80, 85, mildew has a hard time being prolific. So it's really like that 75, 80 degrees with humidity that really brings that on. If you get plant, if you have plants to get it every year, you want to start spraying them before you get it, or like we just saw on the flocks here, when you first see it starting. That's really easy, and you'll prevent it from getting on the new growth. Sometimes you can, it'll if you hit, hit it early enough, it'll kill what's there on the leaves already, and um, they'll recover from it. But this Menarda here is a great example of what what it looks like if it gets out of hand. You can see the leaves are yellowing. And then eventually it'll start it'll start sucking so much life out of this monarda that the flowering will be affected and this is gonna this monarda is gonna look terrible by the time we get to the end of july so you can spray this a lot of times too with perennials you can take and cut if you want to cut them back and let them flush out again and and then start spraying them to prevent it from happening that's a good good course of action so powdery mildew some people just live with it. Um, keeping your plants well spaced, um, air circulation helps, but if you have plants that are prone, have a bottle of something ready to, to, to take care of that. So I have a couple of options here. Um, copper fungicide works super well on powdery mildew and a lot of other things. One of my favorites here is uh, this Bonide Revitalize. This is actually a bio fungicide. So again, kind of like the, um, the Captain Jacks we've talked about, which is the bacillus and the BT for the caterpillars. This is another bacteria that occurs in nature that can be sprayed on the foliage as a topical treatment. The thing that's really cool about the Revitalize is you can also water the roots with it. And it actually, as a drench, and it actually triggers an immune response in the plants. The uh, bacterium prolificates in the root system of the plant, and it actually makes the plant stronger and more resistant to things like uh, black spot and mildew and all those other bad things. Um, so powdery mildew, if you don't have it already, you, you're probably going to see it at some point. So um, be ready, and I'll be right back. All right, so those were a couple of gardening foes. I'm going to share now an, another insect picture that we got in from a customer. And this is, we'll, we'll have to consider him a gardening friend. I mean... This is a swallowtail, a black swallowtail larvae feeding on parsley. Um, now, if you're growing parsley, maybe you're not considering him that much of a friend because he's eating your parsley. But he is the larvae of the black swallowtail butterfly, and parsley happens to be one of their host plants. Black swallowtail larvae are very fond of members of the carrot family. So that's going to include things like parsley, it's going to be dill, and it's going to be fennel. Um, those, are the th those are the three most popular ones that they, that they like to eat. Um, people get frustrated when they're growing parsley and it starts getting eaten by bugs. You know, especially, 
bugs that could potentially turn into a beautiful butterfly. So we kind of we kind of want to let them be. Um, I highly recommend planting um, extra parsley um, always, so you could, there's plenty for you and plenty for the swallowtails. Another neat trick that I love to do with these guys, if you're growing parsley and dill and you're having trouble with the swallowtail larvae getting into them every year, plant some fennel too. I mean, people, not that there's anything wrong with fennel, but people don't, don't, people don't embrace fennel nearly as they do uh, dill, and, dill and parsley. So plant sacrificial fennel in your garden with those other guys and let the, um, let the um let the let the caterpillar larvae have at the fennel all summer while you enjoy the dill and the parsley guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next week